Oh, shalom, brothers and sisters. Today I want to talk about the witch of Endor in the Old Testament. Now, the witch of Endor, you know, the story about uh, King Saul, the first king of Israel, who, you know, in the beginning had all good uh, intentions and purposes, but he slowly started disobeying Yahweh and disappointing him. So at a certain point, Yahweh turned his back on him and didn't want nothing to do with him because he became wicked, you know, he had fits of rages and things like that, but anyways, we're going to talk about the witch, his encounter with the witch of Endor, and of course, you know, it was one of Yahweh's commands that you don't, you don't practice witchcraft, you don't have nothing to do with a witch, and a witch, witch should be uh, slayed, you know, should be put away, and um, it says it right here in Exodus 22, 18, it says right here, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. That's how serious the abomination is. Toward, you know, Yahweh, that's the way he looks at it. You know, it's an abomination. Shouldn't put up with the evil. You shouldn't let it breathe the same air with you. But uh want to go to the Witch of Endor now. And you can find that. You can find that in um, 1 Samuel 28. Chapter 28. And I'm going to read this little story story to you just in case you you know haven't haven't heard of it which you know i'm sure you have but um i'm gonna start with uh verse five now first five it's, it's telling tell the circumstances of why king saul went to meet this witch here we go and when saul when saul saw the host of the philistines he was afraid and his heart was greatly trembled now, the Philistines were the enemy forces that was always, you know, in conflicts with Israel. King Saul was scared when he saw the saw their numbers. And when, and, Saul, when, and when Saul inquired of Yahweh, Yahweh answered him not, neither by dreams, nor, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit. That they might go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. Feel familiar spirits, you know, is basically the woman's, you know, possessed demonically. You know, she's got a evil spirit within her, and that's how she's got her power to do her little fortune telling or whatever you want to call it. And Saul disguised himself and put on other clothes and he went and two men with him and they came to the woman by night and he said i pray thee divine unto me by the familiar spirit and bring me him up who I, who whom i shall name unto thee and the woman said unto him behold thou knowest what saul hath done how he hath cut off those who have familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land whereof then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die. And Saul swore to her by Yahweh, saying, As Yahweh liveth, there shall no punishment happen unto thee for this thing. So in other words, he's saying it's okay when Yahweh said, like in Exodus, it's not okay. But Saul's saying it's okay. And the woman, of course, is scared, you know, she's going to be found out and she's going to be executed. Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel, the prophet. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spoke to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. Because she, she figured out he was Saul after she saw Samuel, the prophet, the great prophet. Everybody knew him. He's, he's famous. And he passed away, you know, just a little time before that. But she didn't know exactly that was Saul until this happened. And she's she's kind of worried now, thinking he deceived, purposely deceived her. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw a mighty one ascending out of the earth. So the spirit's coming out of the earth. And um, it's kind of raises another question about it you know you know if we got if we got some kind of uh 
mortal soul or something, if we all went to heaven, that is, wouldn't, wouldn't the spirit of Samuel be coming back down from from heaven instead of coming up from the ground? You know, people always say, you know, you go die, you go up to heaven, you know, and sit on the clouds. But, you know, Samuel's spirit, her person should have came down, not come up from the ground. But she's, you know, of course, she saw him come up from the ground. And he said, and he said unto her, what form is he of? And she said, an old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel. And he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. But this this wasn't really Samuel because the dead is dead. You know, Proverbs and all those say when you're dead, you're dead, you know. And uh, this, this was actually an imposter, a, a demonic imposter. And that's what demons usually do. They come back as loved ones and everything and try to pull up somebody's hearts and strings. But this was not Samuel, but it looked like it was an imposter, impersonator. And Samuel said unto Saul, what hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? Not bring me down, bring me up. And Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and Elohim is departed from me, and answereth me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called thee, that thou mayest make known unto me what shall I do. Then said Saul, Wherefore then thou Thou ask of me, seeing Yahweh has departed from thee and has become thine enemy. So Yahweh is his enemy now. Oh. And Yahweh hath done to him as he spoke by me, for the Yahweh hath rent the kingdom out of thy hands and given it unto thy servant, David, young King David. As thou obeyest not the voice of Yahweh, nor executed his fierce wrath upon Amulek. Therefore hath Yahweh done this thing unto thee to this day. Moreover, Yahweh will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow shalt thou, thou and thy sons be with me. Yahweh also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. So this demon, usually demons, they, they get, add truth and error. They kind of lie or add little sprinkles of truth. But he's actually telling Saul what's what's going to happen to him. And Saul felt straightforward all along on the earth and was sore, sorely afraid because of the words of Samuel. And there was no strength in him, for he had eaten no bread all, all the day, nor the night. And the woman came unto Saul and, and saw that he was sorely troubled and said unto him, Behold! Thine handmaid hath obeyed thy voice, I have put my life in my hand, and I have hearkened unto thy words, which thou spokest unto me. Now therefore I pray thee, hearken thou also unto the voice of thine handmaid, and let me set a morsel of bread before thee, and eat that thou mayest have strength when thou goest on the way. So she wants to feed him and have him go on his way. She's probably still a little nervous about his true intentions. Like, is he going to execute her because he got bad news, you know? Kill the messenger. <laughs> but he refused and said, I will not eat. But his servants, together with the woman, compelled him. And he hearkened unto the voice. So he rose from the earth and sat upon the bed. And the woman had a fat calf in the house and hasted and killed it and took flour and kneaded it. And did bake unleavened bread thereof. <clears throat> so she got up and cooked them unleavened bread, which, you know, symbolically a lot of times, uh, unleavened bread is, uh, you know, sin, you know. And, you know, you're supposed to put the sin out like in Passover. But, I mean, it's not really bad to eat, but that's just a symbolic version, you know. But she brought it before Saul and before his servants, and they did eat. Then they rose up and went away that night. So, King Saul, you know, one blunder after another, you know, he, he's, he's doing one bad thing after another. You know, he's not uh, obeying Yahweh. He's times, you know, he, you know, took upon himself to do some priestly uh, sacrifices, you know, and Samuel didn't come in one one occasion. He did it, and and now to top it off, he really did an abomination, a sinful abomination, by going to the witch, and uh, that was his. I mean, he, he's already he's already gone, but 
this is the icing on the cake. You know, he wanted, he thought he could get Samuel to come up and talk to him and give him some good news or, you know, advice. And this demon imposter come up and told him actually what was going to happen. And it did happen. He went out on the battlefield with his troops, his son, and, uh, yeah, they perished, you know, and, uh, he perished and King David was, uh, the next king in line. So, so day, and, and you know, there was no the story of David. We'll get, I'll get into that in another episode, but that was a downfall of Saul, of course, you know, and, and it was just tragic, you know, because in the very beginning, Samuel picked him out. Or Yahweh had Samuel, or Samuel pick him out. You know, he was tall, handsome, imposing, you know, I mean, people looked up to him because he was pretty tall is what the scripture said. And at first, it all, you know, all of his intentions were great, you know, and he followed Yahweh for, to, for a while. And then he slowly started messing up and started getting fits of rages, going, going insane and mad, you know. They said, you know, had a demon in him and stir, stirred up in him sometimes and only David's heart plan could actually soothe the savage beast, as you would say. But that was the story of the Witch of Endor. And uh, now witchcraft is, you know, evil. It's totally wrong. And it's an abomination in the sight of Yahweh. So so that's all I want to say about that. And I, I thank you very much for joining me. And uh, please like my videos and, you know, subscribe and hit the notification bells for more content. Comment below. Uh, Share this with anybody and everybody you can. And with that said and done, thank you again. Peace out and shalom.